Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Her Version. This podcast is dedicated to sharing stories of struggle with triumph, a platform that allows individuals to tell their truth in order to inspire and uplift others. For those of you that are new to this podcast and like content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow, like, and share. I am your host, Sabrina Victoria. Let's jump right in. Um, I kind of want to talk about, um, beliefs, belief systems, and I'm interested in knowing what was the most disempowering belief that you've had in your life. And then what do you believe now? The most disempowering belief that I really had a hard time shaking was, uh, I'm not good enough or I'm not enough, I'm not lovable enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not capable enough, I don't know enough, I'm not smart, whatever, not enough comes along with it, you know? And it took me a long time to shake that. Um, what's really help, what was really helpful for me in, in shifting that was of course, first the awareness that that is one of my most deep-seated beliefs. Um, but the second one was um, negating that belief by saying, not enough for who, not enough of, for what, when is enough, what is enough? Because I spent so many years just collecting degrees, thinking that that would make me enough. And then, you know, make, having more and more accomplishments, thinking that would be enough. And I never felt enough until I changed the narrative inside my head, right? Like, we are a work in progress. I said earlier, that's, that's one of my, my strongest life lessons, biggest life lessons is that we are all a work in progress. I'm enough for myself today. I'm enough for others today. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop. It doesn't mean that tomorrow I won't be more or different, but I can be okay with myself today. Yeah. And, um, I really think my kids have been a big contribution in changing that belief because if I'm never enough for myself, they're never going to be enough either. Right. So I, I'm constantly, yes. I, 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 too high standards, yep. you know, over demanding all of those things that come along with a negative self belief that I'm transmitting to them. And I really didn't want that. And I realized I was starting to do that. Wow. And, um, it said self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, you know, kids, the, the beautiful or horrible things about kids, depending on how you want to see it, is that they mirror to you who you are. Yeah. And so I would see behavior in my daughter that, that I had that was that I found shocking. You know? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's awful. She would repeat a sentence that I would say, and I'd be like, oh, that sounds horrible coming <laughs> I can't say that anymore. And they mirror to you like all of your broken and disconnected beliefs and thoughts. And I just find kids so, such a great education. <laughs> yeah, agree. Agree a hundred percent. I definitely know that, you know, the having children, I have, I have my son, but it's definitely been a learning, a learning experience. And I'm so grateful that I found and decided to embrace personal development. I think it's so important to take that step. I think a lot of times individuals think that after high school or after college, you know, then that's it. They never open up any book or try to learn anything else ever again. And they're really doing themselves a disservice and their lineage a disservice. I want to ask, you know, you mentioned um enough and what is your take on knowing you're enough but then also being willing to learn more you know because if i would have said i'm enough 
at the age of 25, you know, right when I was getting into personal development, why would I have ever taken the step to learn anything more? So what's the, what is the, the little balance that we have to have between feeling good, but then also striving for better? Yeah, that's such a great question. Um, I, I think, I think it relates very much to the self-awareness again. Uh, part of what I do in my coaching is I do an emotional intelligence assessment. And what I have found is that people with very low self-awareness have also spent very little time in introspection and in uh, personal development. I think when we're not aware of what we're feeling or uh, where we are or how the world is reacting to us, we have less incentive to change, to evolve, to look inwards and to improve. The other thing you had asked me about anger and fear earlier is that I think there are two kinds of people. I think there are some people who are more driven by fear and some people who are uh, more driven by um, pain. Let me see how to put this. So there's fear and there's pain. And some people are more averse to fear. Some people are more averse to pain. Introspection and personal development is painful. And so if you have an appetite for pain, if you can overcome it, you go towards that, you will develop yourself, right? Like if you're able to do the, the pain part, if you're more likely to stay in the fear space and not go into the pain space, then you keep away from self-development because it's you don't want to be in the pain space. You're you're more comfortable being in fear. I, I it's a wow. Story. That's so interesting because I I view those very much the same, but they're not the same. I don't think so. I've given it a lot well, of to be fearful of something and then to feel pain from something. Wow, okay. So I, I take myself as an example. I, I don't mind pain because I always know it's temporary. And so I'm very willing to do things that might appear painful, like introspection, like you know, getting jabbed with a needle, like whatever it is. I don't like living in fear because fear disempowers me. You know, some people are more comfortable with fear, living in chronic fear because pain is something they're very, very averse to. So how can you switch? Well, you have to make the, the fear more uncomfortable and you have to lower the perception of pain. Pain is a perception for a, to, to a very big extent. Yeah. Most of us have, we're more afraid of the imminent pain than uh, of the pain itself. Yeah, your perception right? of the pain. Yeah, like you see, you know, let's say you want to get a, a shot. You see the needle coming towards you. You're afraid of that needle. But when it actually sticks, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. It's, it's not the event. It's the, the anticipation of the event. Yeah. And so I hate needles every single time I make a huge deal about, I mean, not for a huge deal for me. I'm not like that dramatic, but I'm all like, do you have a ball I can squeeze? Is there a teddy bear? Like I say stuff like that, you know, and I'm like, squeeze, I got, I'm like white knuckling my purse all. And yeah, it's never even that big of a deal. It's so crazy. But the entire time from the moment they're about to stick me, until they take the needle out. So they have to take like a few vials the whole time. I'm literally like, like clenching for dear life. Um, and it's, it's hilarious. Like every, ever after I just went through this whole thing. Cause I broke my leg 2020 oh, yeah. October. Yeah. Just literally snapped it in half. And so going into surgery was a whole thing with needles not a lot because they like do it through one predominantly, but then there was a few couple others um, to like numb my legs and stuff uh, and or my leg. And then I had to go back 
to get all, I had to get metal in to fix it. And then I had to go back and get all the metal out once it was fixed. So I had to do it twice. And then all the appointments I had to do leading up to the second surgery to like check all my vitals. Um, I had some issues with my blood and some issues with my heart rate and all this stuff. So I had to like keep going back to like get Dr. Okay's, you know, to do whatever, but it was like so much and every, and I'm into, I'm doing personal development. This is like my arena of doing all the things, but for some reason, this silly little needle, and it's frustrating to me because I know like, it's not even when it's done, literally everything's fine. Like it's not even that big of an issue, but I do all the things I'm like talking to myself. I'm trying to like internalize and be, and it still frightens me so much. Do you think it's because you're focused on, on the fear? Cause I find when you focus on the afterwards, right? Like if you focus on the reward, when I'm done, it's not going to be anything, you know, it's going to be fine. You know, this is going to be over soon. The sooner I start, the sooner I end. I, I always find that if you focus on the reward or the aftermath or the end result that you're trying to accomplish, it makes, it makes it so much easier. What they say, right? What you I focus on that. So I'll have to do that next time. I'm going to write that down. Because I have not done that. I have not thought about the happiness after and that it's not that big of a deal. That That's what gets me through so many hard things like, you know, running, going for a 5K run. Sometimes it's just really hard. Sometimes I'm tired, not in the mood. But I always think, okay, I'm just going to do, I chunk it down. I'm just going to do one more kilometer and I'm going to feel so good. I remember that feeling. Like I really work on my memory. I remember how good it feels to, you know, when I finish running the endorphins and all of that and I feel fit. And so I'm just going to do one more. And then I do that one more and I'm like, well, I'm already at three. I'm just going to do one more and then I'll quit. So I always give myself choice, yeah. the options to opt out. And I focus on when I'm done, I'm going to feel so good. Yeah. I, I 5k, but I like lie to myself to get there. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. I can appreciate that. So fear versus pain. Is there anything else besides that? Um, remind me of your question again. Well, you, were, you were, that's okay. There, there was no question. Um, we were talking about people doing things and personal development oh, oh, right, and right. how depending on which you are um yeah. some people will be more prone to get into personal development than other people so you know yeah. people view life more painful or more fearful one is more pr and then i asked which is where we ended we did have a question you're right um can you switch i i think you can so I, I use my clients as a benchmark to understand. And I think some of them come where, when uh, some of them come to me when there's no option anymore, right? Like they're, they have been backed into a corner and, and avoiding personal development is no longer a choice. They have to, it's either that or get fired. It's either personal development or, you know, uh, get a divorce. It's either personal development or something like they, they, they get to a point where they know that this is the only next choice they have to make. Got it. And other people are more self-aware. They feel like, okay, I'm not really where I want to be. I need to improve my life and I'm going to go do it now. So it's a, it's a matter of timing, but it, I really think everybody gets to it sooner or later. I know, I know people in their seventies and eighties who only now are getting into personal development because they, they want to be able to feel that their life was a life well lived or a life that was worth living. They want to have some sort of, um, packaging or wrapping that makes sense around their life. And you can't do that without introspection, right? You can't yeah. without understanding what drove your choices and why you did what you did and what it meant or, or find the meaning for it. Definitely. Definitely. So I kind of want to talk about what you do. You know, you've shared so much information with us. There are a ton of people online right now, obviously interested in, uh, in you, your story and what you have to offer. Can you tell us, what you do and how you help the humans. 
Yeah, it's my favorite thing. Um, I run a, a coaching company. It's called Audacity Activated because I feel like we all have audacity inside of us that just needs to be turned on. So I'm an executive leadership and life coach. And I work on three big areas of people. I help uh, in building skills, leadership skills, creativity skills. I'm a certified creativity coach. I'm a certified life and executive coach. Um, with uh, I do emotional intelligence assessments, and then I help people build up their emotional intelligence so that they can be better leaders. And um, and I help people change behavior through emotional intelligence because again. The, the four steps of emotional intelligence are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and then social management. And if you are able to do those, you are able to, you're much more likely to be successful. So high IQ, there is no correlation with success. High emotional intelligence, very strong correlation with success. It's, it's so simple. It's a simple formula. And this is where I said, I thought I was so smart until I discovered, you know, emotional intelligence. Um, and then I, I help people uh, build self-awareness through mind-body skills. So I'm, I'm very passionate about mind-body skills because it builds self-awareness. I'm very passionate about emotional intelligence because it helps to create better leaders, better humans. And I'm very passionate about creativity because it helps to build up our skills of divergent thinking and of transforming the unique parts of who we are into something that we want to share with the world, something meaningful. Absolutely. Audacity activated. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And her um, her website is above her face area for anyone who wanted to check out. Is all your social media on there so they can click and follow you? Okay. It is. Very cool. Very cool. What does success mean to you? Loving yourself and loving the life that you've created. So, yeah, I just, I think when you're successful, it has to be your own definition not society's definition. And you have to feel good about the person that you are um, creating because you're creating yourself every day by the actions you take and the choices you make and, um, and building a life that is meaningful. You know, I, for me, success is three things that I have tattooed on my body. It's um, having freedom of choice. It's loving people around me and supporting my family, my society, my community. And it's the ability to be creative and to write, to make art, to, you know, put a part of myself into the world. A hundred percent. This Facebook uh, guest says, thank you for sharing. I read Kat's bio and it, it was what really made me want to attend today. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. No, I really appreciate all that you do. It's it's just such important work to be able to share the stories of women out there and to continue to have our voices heard so that we can inspire and motivate the next generation and everyone needs a little boost. Yeah, definitely. I kind of want to touch, you know, before we you know start to close up here, we kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning of our podcast, but you know, females and, and everyone, you know, deals with this, you know, and I like to notate that every once in a while, I'm not naive to the fact that all humans, um, you know, get, get tied up in certain areas of their life. Um, but for the females out there who are struggling to really figure out who they are or what they are, and to be their authentic selves, what would be what would be your advice as far as speaking to a woman right now who's just really struggling with herself? With herself, like with yeah, like 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 being who she's supposed to be. Yeah, um, I, I'm a big advocate for making mental space to be with yourself. A lot of times we're so busy and so stressed and we're on the treadmill that we have no time to get to know ourselves. So 
If you can't travel, uh, go on a date by yourself, sit in a cafe, see what makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, just get to know, start being curious about um, what piques your interest. I gave a TED talk once on the power of distraction and that's what got me started. It's those little distractions that, that catch your attention, that are calling to you and telling you what you're interested in, who you are, what matters to you, you know? When you're walking down the street, who do you, what do you notice? Who do you notice? Do you notice the person sitting on the side or do you notice the car? Or, you know, when you're at work, what is it that angers you? Is it the injustice? Is it the lack of connection? All of these things, like every moment we are living is informs us more about who we are, about what matters to us, about what we care about. And then you have to have a place to put it, right? Like the reason that I wrote so much is it was a great way to gather all of this information into a space and then to make sense of it. So either talk to somebody about it, what I'm discovering about myself, or write it down, who am I? Every day, like ask yourself, who am I? You might start by saying, I'm a, you know, I'm a woman and I'm struggling with this, but I found something that I wrote 10 years ago about who am I? And, you know, oh, you found something. Yeah. I was looking through my files and I found like I had written 10 years ago. Who am I? That's the best. I love that. So cool. Yeah. And, and just start like, who am I? And answer that question. And then the next question is what matters to me? What do I want? Like, it might be a house, it might be, you know, uh, abundance, it might be, you know, a, a relationship, but go deeper than that. You know, what do I want? I want, I want money, right? Like I started my business to make money, but what I want is not money. What I want is the freedom that money gives me, right? Like I have a family. Why did I want a family? Because I want the love and connection that that brings to me. Yeah. You know, like we, when we understand who we are and what we want, that's the biggest part of the equation. We understand who we are. That's point A. And we understand what we want. That's point B. And then the only challenge is figuring out the shortest distance between the two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I do think, I love that you're saying this because I do think one of the biggest issues that we struggle with is knowing what we want. We don't even know. I ask people, well, what, do, what are you trying to do? What do you want? They have no idea. Yeah. And that's why the values exercise is so, so helpful. As a coach, you, you, I'm sure you know that, but like, what are your values? What matters to you? Because those are the things that we uh, use to make choices. And if we are living in line with our values, we feel good and we feel happy. And if we're not, then no amount of things that we collect or, you know, jobs that we get are going to make us feel happy. Yeah. So what do you want and why do you want it? I love that. Yeah. 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 Who are you? What do you want? Why do you want it? <laughs> Absolutely. That's so good. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you taking some time out of your day to sit down with us and share your journey and really just kind of open up, you know, as far as the things that you've learned along the way. I think that this was, I learned some awesome stuff during this. I, I appreciate you. Do you have any closing thoughts before I close up here? It's been my pleasure. And the only thing I will say is that the more you look inwards, the better, of, the better an outer world you can create. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Kat. I so appreciate you. And for those of you, um, everyone that's still hanging on past an hour, we so appreciate you spending time with us, supporting us. Anyone who is interested in learning more about Kat, um, her website is in her box area there, audacityactivated.com. All of her social media um, and links and all of that stuff is also on that website. So thank you so much for joining us here on her version. This community is expanding every single day and is filled with females who are striving to do better than they did yesterday. For those of you that are new to this podcast and like content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow, like, and share. If you have an amazing story to share, uh, make sure you reach out to me at herversion.life or just direct message me. I am your host, Sabrina Victoria, and I'm so grateful to be here sharing a platform that allows people to share their truth and inspire others. Do something awesome.